Welcome back today guys and we're going to be continuing with our tutorials with integration. Now what we're going to look at today is a definite integral. Now a definite integral has a very specific application of trying to find the area under a curve but today in this tutorial what we're going to focus on is the general principle behind the definite integral. Okay and in the next tutorial we're going to look at how to apply it. So if we have a definite integral, the reason why it's different to a normal integral is it gives me two values for x, one on top, one on bottom, which we're going to call in our general rule as b and a. So if we have the definite integral of the two values b and a of f dash x dx, what I need to do is integrate it, okay, with b and a still on the outside, then I take my top value for x, sub it in, and minus my bottom value for x after it's subbed in. Now that rule is a little confusing guys, it's a bit easier in context. So what I'm going to look at now for example 1 is the integral of 2, 0, 3 to the power of 3x to the power of 2 dx. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to integrate it. Okay, So I'm going to raise the power by 1 so we get 3x to the power of 3 and divide by the new power. And I'm going to leave my two definite integrals on the outside, 2 and 0. What I'd see here is that my 3's cancel, which leaves me with x cubed on the inside, 2 to the power of 0. So for my definite integral now, my next step is I'm going to sub in 2. So I have 2 cubed instead of x minus 0 cubed. 2 cubed is 8 minus 0 is equal to 8. So my definite integral of 3x squared with 2 and 0 as my definite integrals is 8. So I get an actual value at the end of this question. Now we're going to look at part 2 here. Part 2 here gives me the definite integrals of 4 and 2. And we have x squared minus x plus 3 dx. So again I'm going to raise each of the powers by 1 and divide by the new power. So I get x cubed over 3 minus x squared over 2 plus 3x. Okay, And we're going to leave our integrals on the outside. I'm going to simplify now. So I have a third x cubed minus a half x squared plus 3x with my definite integrals on the outside. Now my next step is that I'm going to sub in my two definite integrals. So the first time here, just to put a gap between the two questions, I'm going to have 1 over 3 by 4 cubed minus a half by 4 squared plus 3 by 4. And I'm going to minus the second value of subbing in the 2. So I've just gone below the line here, guys. So I have a half 2 cubed, sorry, a third 2 cubed minus a half by 2 squared plus 3 by 2. And I'm going to take these away now. So I'm going to use my calculator here to type in the first value and then the second value. So I have 1 over 3 by 4 to be cubed minus 1 over 2 by 4 to be squared plus 3 by 4 which gives me 76 over 3 or 25.3 recurring. So I have 25.3 recurring minus and now I'm going to go back and change my 4 to a 2. So I have 2, go back change my 4 to a 2 and I'm going to go back and change my 4 to a 2 which equals 6.6 .6 recurring. So now I'm going to type that into my calculator. Good opportunity to revise how to put in recurring. I'm going to press shift and the x squared button to get my recurring. So we have 25.3 recurring, 6 point shift x squared 6 recurring equals 18.6 recurring is what I get as my definite integral for this answer here. Okay, so the next one I'm going to look at now is part 3. In part 3 of this question, I can see I have a root and it's below the line. So that before I'm able to integra integrate, definite integral or not, I need to rearrange this so that it's a bit simpler. Well, I know that that's going to be the definite integral of 1 over x to the power of a half because root x is always x to the power of a half. To bring it above the line, I'm going to do the definite integral of 9 and 4 of x to the power of minus a half dx. So now I'm going to plus 1 to the power and divide by the new power. So I have x to the power of a half because minus a half plus 1 is a positive a half divided by a half 
with my definite integral of 9 and 4 on the outside. So now what I need to do here is I'm going to simplify to having 1 divided by a half is just going to give me 2. Okay? x to the power of a half is the same as having root x with 9 and 4. So now what I really have is 2 root 9 minus 2 root 4, which if I put into my calculator will give me my final answer. 2 root 9 minus 2 root 4 equals just 2. Happy days. Okay? So that was an introduction to the definite integrals, and we're now going to look at examples of using definite integrals using cos and e, which means, guys, what I would do now is I would take my log tables, for example, two, and I would open them to page 26 so that I make sure I have all my rules in front of me, just like this here. Okay? So now let's look at part one here. It says evaluate the definite integral of pi over 2 and pi over 4 with cos of 2x. So I have the definite integral of pi over 2 and pi over 4 cos of 2x dx. Well, the first thing I'd see is when I integrate cos, cos goes to sine of 2x. And I know that by my rule, I need to divide by 2 here with pi over 2 on the outside and pi over 4 on the outside. Now, that's the same as having a half sine of 2x with pi over 2 and pi over 4 as my definite integrals. So remember, we always sub in the top first. So I have a half sine 2 by pi over 2 minus, and I'm just going to squish down here, a half sine 2 by pi over 4. Which means I actually have here, guys, a half 2 and 2 cancel to leave me with a half sine of pi. Here, 2 and 4 cancel to leave me with 2 on the bottom. So minus a half sine of pi over 2. And because they've given me my angle in radians, when I sub this into my calculator, I need to sub it in in radians. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to shift mode. I'm going to press 3 for degrees. Sorry, I'm going to press shift mode and I'm going to press 4 for radians. Then I'm going to type in 1 over 2 sine of shift and pi. Uh, sorry, bracket, minus 1 over 2, press across, sign, fraction button, shift and pi, press down, all over 2, bracket, equals minus a half. So my final answer at the end of this example is minus a half. So the next one we're going to look at here is the integral, the definite integral, because remember guys, as soon as they give me two x values, 5 and 4, it's a definite integral, of 4e to the power of x dx. Now, what I would notice here is that e to the power of x, as by my rules, if there's no number in front of the x, when I integrate it, it stays the same. So we still have 4e to the power of x with my two definite integrals, 5 and 4. So now in this example, what I should have is e to the power of 5 minus 4e to the power of 4, which I can put into my calculator now. So we have 4, we press shift and ln to get e to the power of 5, minus 4, shift and ln, e to the power of 4 to get 4. And I get 375.26. So 375.26. All right, guys, we're nearly there. We're on to our last example here for part 3, which is where I have a variable as a power. So we have 2 and 0 as our definite integrals, 9 to the power of x dx. And I know from my rules here, guys, that if I have a constant to the power of a variable, my integral is going to be a to the power of x over ln of a. So when I integrate this guy, I know I'm really going to have 9 to the power of x over the ln of 9. Okay? And I'm going to have 2 and 0 on the outside. So my next step now is I'm going to have 9 to the power of 2 over the ln of 9 minus 9 to the power of 0 over the ln of 9, which now I can type into my calculator again. So fraction button, 9 to the power of 2 all over the ln of 9. Press across, minus, fraction button, uh, 9 to the power of 0 all over ln of 9, which gives me 
36.41. 36.41 is my next answer as a definite integral. Now guys, take a minute, go back over that, add example one and example two into our notes, and then we're gonna look in the next tutorial at applying the definite integral to find the area under a curve. Thanks very much guys, bye.